Hey guys, this is Dr. Pebbles, and welcome back to the Sonic Origins Collection Review, where we're taking a look at all the 16-bit Sonic games that make up the collection. We have already covered Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and Sonic CD, so today we'll be taking a look at the first numbered entry in the series, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. After the massive success of Sonic the Hedgehog, it was no question that a sequel to the game should follow. However, things did not pan out as smoothly as you would expect. Frustrations over the development of Sonic began to boil over leading to the departure of Yuji Naka, who did not want to deal with the company's politics and decided to work elsewhere. As you recall from the Sonic 1 review, Sega received feedback from their Western development studio, the Sega Technical Institute, which was created to hire talented individuals getting their start in the gaming industry and teach them about the world of development. Mark Cerny was the head of the institute and already secured Japanese talents, one of which being Hirokazu Yasuhara, who was the director of the original Sonic the Hedgehog game. After learning of Yuji Naka's departure, Mark immediately reached out to him to persuade him to come to America as well to become part of the Western venture. With the salary and executive power being promised, Yuji Naka accepted his offer and was brought back to Sega on the Western front. Eventually, the studio would be tasked with developing the sequel to Sonic the Hedgehog, though this would be created within as a collaboration between the Western and Japanese developers. Naoto Oshima would remain at Sega of Japan and would become director of the Sonic title for the Sega CD, Sonic CD, which Seraph covered in a previous episode. Development on Sonic the Hedgehog 2 did not go smooth as well since language barriers and a difference in war cultures created problems with the development, combined with overambition in approaching deadlines. However, passion remained throughout the game's development with Sega of Japan along with Mark Cerny helping with facilitating communication between the two dev groups. Even though levels and concepts had to ultimately be cut to meet the release date, one aspect of Sonic 2 that was conceived early on remained and became the focal selling point of the title. That feature would be two-player cooperative play and feature a brand new character alongside Sonic. After an internal competition within the company, a design was conceived. The new character was an orange two-tailed fox named Miles Prower, a play on words on the term Miles Per Hour. He was quickly nicknamed to Tails for simplicity, though the creator of this concept, Yasushi Yamaguchi, still snuck it in during the development process, and the full name of Miles Tails Prower stuck to this day. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 takes place after Sonic 1, or Sonic CD according to the timeline now established in the Origins collection, where Sonic decides to do some traveling, looking for a new adventure. He comes across West Side Island and eventually encounters the new character Tails, who becomes inspired by Sonic and wants to be like him. Sonic notices Tails keeping up with his speed, and the power of his tail propellers lets him tag along for this new adventure. Immediately, it becomes clear that Dr. Robotnik is up to no good once again, capturing small animals on this island to power his machines, and it's up to Sonic and Tails to bring an end once again to his machinations. In Sonic 2, you can not only play as Sonic or Tails, but you can also bring a friend or a family to play two-player co-op where one person controls Sonic and the other plays as Tails. Sonic now also has access to his iconic spin dash move, which allows him to achieve great speeds immediately for different platforming applications. With these new mechanics and a whopping 10 zones to clear, is Sonic the Hedgehog 2 a worthy follow-up to the original game? Let's see what works in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 in... The Good. The introduction of the spin dash is a game-changing quality of life upgrade since sometimes building up speed in the original game became a hassle. Now you have access to a burst of speed to help clear certain inclines and loops. Another improvement comes from the removal of Sonic's top speed cap. Even though you could go fast in the original, it always felt that there was a limit to how fast you could go. Now taking advantage of the Genesis or Mega Drive's blast processing, Sonic can achieve speeds even greater than before where he'll even be out of view in most cases. This effect is also achieved through the revamped level designs which shows a massive improvement over the first game's levels. Of the first game's 6 zones, only 3 really took advantage of Sonic's speed platforming. The zones in this game feel more consistent with each zone being constructed to take advantage of Sonic's skill set. 
You will run into the occasional obstacle which will prompt you to slow down, but the experience feels more consistent this time around with levels challenging you in different ways. The levels themselves got not only a visual improvement but a thematical one as well. Along with the nature inspired levels you will also run into different industrial environments with visuals that truly show off what the Genesis is capable of. One noteworthy addition are the spinning tubes in Metropolis Zone which give a 3D effect in its visuals. The levels, aside from Metropolis Zone, now only boast two acts so I feel this benefits the game as a whole so that no level overstays is welcome. I'm looking at you, Labyrinth Zone. Why did Mommy Sega let you have four acts, huh? Anyway, this allows for other level themes to get their time in the spotlight, which gives the game an overall distinct feel from the previous game. The levels also scale nicely in difficulty as you progress through the game, though there is a bit of a difficulty spike which I'll go over later. If you have someone play the game with you, then Tails does feel like a very nice addition to the game, as you can both work together to clear levels, though the perspective remains on Sonic and all the game's lives are tied to him. Tails, however, you can use and abuse until the cows come home. But you would never do that, would you? Another addition to this game is how the Chaos Emeralds work. In the original game, they were used to unlock the best ending for the game, but that's it. They also unlock a different ending in this game, though to be honest, the regular ending feels like the better one thematically. There is another thing the Emeralds do where if you collect all 7 Chaos Emeralds, you unlock the ability to transform into Super Sonic. A golden yellow form of Sonic that moves faster, jumps higher, and is invulnerable to all damage aside from losing air and being crushed. It feels like a fantastic reward for clearing all the special stages which are different and tougher than ever. Accessing the special stages is better executed in this game than the first since you have more opportunities to do so since you just need to be carrying 50 rings and hit one of the many level checkpoints in each zone act. The mobile taxman and Origins versions of Sonic 2 bring their own massive improvements. Along with the additions of playable Knuckles, widescreen support, and a better frame rate, these versions also remake the special stages to have a better draw distance than the original. Now you can clearly see what's coming up on the halfpipe and better prepare for it. Also, the widescreen support is a game changer for later stages that you can better prepare for, which I'll also talk about later. Tails is now able to fly in this game where he couldn't before in the original, and Sonic can take advantage of his flying capabilities to easily reach higher platforms. Heck, there's even a Knuckles and Tails version where you can do the same things with Tails. One last thing I want to bring up is how this version restores a single act of a cut zone from the original, which was Hidden Palace Zone. You're now able to access it in a bottomless pit in Mystic Cave Act 2 and access its own self-contained zone before you move on to the next zone. Much like the development of Sonic 2, not everything panned out as smoothly as one might have hoped, so we'll be losing a life in... The Bad. The power of blast processing helps Sonic achieve a greater sense of speed, but it's still not enough to prevent the slowdown that happens from losing a lot of rings. When too much is happening on screen, prepare for the game to chug. I mentioned before how there's a bit of a difficulty spike later on, and this spike is most apparent in Oil Ocean Zone and Metropolis Zone. Both stages feature a huge issue with bad enemy placement which you have barely any time to react to, Fortunately, Oyo Ocean only has this problem with the Seahorse Badniks. But Metropolis Zone? Oh boy, where do I even begin? It feels like this zone's enemies were designed in place to make you lose rings fast, from the exploding stars that are extremely hard to dodge, to the slicers that 9 times out of 10 you're launched into by the platforming, and the crab enemies with some of the most inconsistent hitboxes I've ever seen. Gamer Tuition would tell you not to hit the big claw, and instead hit his big head. Well, I did hit his head, but the game still penalized me anyway due to the hitbox. Having widescreen support does help with this issue, but the problem still persists with the bad enemy placement. There are also glitches about which I actually ran into a platform that was just inactive for some reason and caused me to fall to my death. The special stages in the original game quickly became a guessing game than being skill based due to the limited draw distance of when you'll see rings or bombs. This made later special stages a hassle to complete. God help you if you have Tails with you because you will also have to account for his delay in imitating your actions. With Tails feeling like a hindrance in these stages, you're better off playing as one of the two solo if you don't want to deal with that. 
Along with the negatives brought up in the previous reviews of the Origins versions of these games, another complaint comes from the fact that Knuckles for some oddball reason is not playable in Sonic 2 Classic mode. I understand Sonic 1 not including Tails or Knuckles in Classic mode since neither one was playable in the originals even with the Sonic and Knuckles cartridge. But that same cartridge allowed for Knuckles to be playable in the original Sonic the Hedgehog 2, so it feels like a very odd removal. One last thing I want to bring up is Tails getting glitched into the environment where you have to constantly put up with his jumping sounds until the stage ends. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, you can't wait for it to stop. Now with all that out of the way, let's race to... The Opinion. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is a very large step up from the original game to the point of it replacing the original as the bundle in game with Genesis purchases. It builds upon what worked in the first game to create a memorable, though at times frustrating, adventure. If you wish to play this game, then I highly recommend seeking out either the Mobile Taxman version or the Origins Collection versions, as the improvements to the game's performance, as well as the inclusion of the cut stage, really enhance the experience and make it more enjoyable. And now it's time for my rating. I would give Sonic the Hedgehog 2 this slicer out of 10. Thanks for watching and tune in for the next part of this review as we look at the third entry in the series, Sonic the Hedgehog 3. If you enjoyed today's review, please check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and our Facebook page. Once again, thank you for watching.